Hi, I'm Jim Smyrniotopoulos, and we're going to talk about making sense of white matter disease. I have no financial disclosures nor conflicts of interest to report. I've got nothing to disclose. I've been through airport security so many times that they recognize me. Stealing from one author is plagiarism. Stealing from everyone is research. And I want to thank all of these people for helping me put together this lecture on patterns of white matter disease. Our educational objectives to recognize tumor factor demyelination, to distinguish multiple sclerosis from neuromyelitis optica spectrum disorders and myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein antibody disease, to distinguish MS from acute disseminated encephalomyelitis, to describe the epidemiology and imaging patterns of progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, and to explain some of the theories of osmotic demyelination. Every day we're asked to analyze and understand and explain and diagnose all kinds of patterns of white matter disease. I like to call them dots and blots in the white matter. What is it and how do you make the diagnosis? I think the easiest way to consider how to approach the differential diagnosis is to take into context the clinical presentation for the patient, but to also look at the patterns of abnormality in the white matter. We have many different patterns that we can look for. We can look for periventricular small ovoid lesions. We can look for the open ring sign. We can look for peripheral marginal enhancement. We can look for rounded lesions that may involve the gray matter as well as the white matter and may spare the periventricular area. We can look at lesions that are more peripheral and come right up to the gray white matter junction. We can look for a pattern of bilateral abnormalities in the white matter in the parieto occipital area. And we can look for lesions that involve the central area of the pods. Each one of these is going to lead us to a different differential diagnosis and perhaps to the actual diagnosis of different kinds of white matter disease. Multiple sclerosis gives you those small lesions. Tumor factor demyelination gives you an open ring pattern of enhancement. Acute disseminated encephalomyelitis is going to involve the gray matter and the white matter, typically in a young child with some immune inciting event. Progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy incurs in the context of immune suppression and tends to go right up against the gray white matter junction. Patients that have an inciting chemotoxic event or more commonly hypertension will have the bilateral appearance of white matter abnormalities in the posterior regions, posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome, and patients who have osmotic demyelinosis will also have central pontine myelinolysis. So we look for these patterns, and when we see them, we can make the differential diagnosis. Now, we could stop right now, but I think it's important to understand exactly what's going on with these patients, what causes these patterns, and what is the pathophysiology of these different flavors of white matter disease.